You're watching Diecast Breakdown with Chuck Ellis, David Johns, and Mark McHotwheel. So sit back, strap in, and hang on. The breakdown starts now. Hey there, folks. Chuck here, and welcome to Diecast Breakdown. I am very excited about today's episode. I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it this time because we've got one of the most, if not the most powerful sites in hobbydom collecting, whatever you want to call it, on the show today. We are talking with Christian Braun, who is the collector of collectors, and he's going to be talking to us about this thing that we almost take for granted now. We use it so often. And before I get to that, though, I want to thank our executive producer level patrons that help make this show go. That would be First and 64th Customs, Video Geek Productions, Twice Diecast, DrivenDreams.org, and of course, our honorary executive producer level patron, Mr. Dane Self. Thank you so much to all of you for making the show go. If you want to know more about that, you can visit DiecastBreakdown.com or click the little join button down below your video if you're watching us here on YouTube. All right, we got that out of the way. I'm going to introduce my co-host now, Mr. David Johns of Twice Diecast fame and executive producer level patron. How you doing today? Chuck, I am doing great. I am excited about this. This episode has been one in the making for a while, and I know everyone's going to enjoy it. So glad to be here. Well, we are collectors, and we are about to talk to the collector of collectors. Christian Braun, welcome to Diecast Breakdown. We are so glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Now... Assuming I am a person getting into collecting, I, I've been living under a rock my whole life, and I want to get into collecting diecast cars. I want to get into collecting Hot Wheels. And somebody comes to you and they say, I've heard of Hobby DB. What is it? How would you describe it to them in your own words? Well, in a nutshell, I would say it's the natural extension to Wikipedia. We start where they stop. We now have 56,000 pages on Hot Wheels. That is heavy product, that's heavy prototype. It's a lot of customs, obviously not heavy custom, but a lot of customs. But it's also brochures, books, pages on designers, on the company, every series. I always like to show stuff. So why don't I why don't I show you? Sure. Yeah. Walk us through it. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, here, for example, you see the cool combi. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can see them. I've now sorted them by the order. You can also sort by... Uh, estimated value or release date or reference number or anything like that. And then you can see there's 33 customs. Well, they, they are here. So these are the customs. And, you know, that I always love that part. You can, you can through, look through the ECN. And if you like a customizer, let's say Brew, C, uh, Brew City Custom, Brew City mm-hmm. Customs, you click on it and then you can see all the stuff that he has. But beyond that, I, I, I also like this kind of stuff. That is, you can see it's unknown maker. That's mm-hmm. just a copy of the cool copy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's different. And I always think those things are fun. Then we, you can see Matchbox, Majorettes, Lone State, anything really. Oops, why do I have so many pages? Of it? And then there's a price guide as well. So here, for example, this is a spot on. So it's a little bit bigger scale. You can see that we sold this. We didn't. It sold three times in the last 10 years by Vectors in 2020. By Wallace and Bollers, which is a British auction house in 2014. And, and there's a price guide that covers as well. So it shows you how much stuff it's worth. You find copies, something I collect. I collect Hong Kong made plastic copies oh. of Corgi toys and Magic Box and so on and so forth. In fact, every single play art is a copy of something else. So you can <laughs> see this thing here mm-hmm. is made by Blue Box Toys is a copy of that MGA sport cards. And it's part of the set. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, Blue Box Toys only made copies uh, of all kinds of companies. And then there's another company called Blue Bow, <laughs> and they copied Blue Box. Because wow. in the day, in the day, if you were a designer of die cars or model cars in Hong Kong, you just go to the local store and you buy a matchbox. <laughs> if you have less money, then you just buy a, a Blue Box. So the Blue, the comma, the matchbox Lesney comma van. It's copied by Blue Box, and then Blue Bow copied that one. And then you've got pages on the real car, like the Gremlin. And then you can 
you can just see other models of it. There's a pedal car, uh, mm-hmm. Disney. there's a model kit. So you can do that. You can also see leaflets and brochures and other things. We, we cover slot cars and model kits, and we also cover Porsche posters and Ferrari leaflets and anything that's automobile. I also like these these older models. So that's the Tootsie Toy Gram sedan. Mm-hmm. Tootsie Toy is the best toy company in the world, and they just make fantastic stuff. And it's just so hard. Even if you go around a lot on the toy fairs, you probably never see all 10 of these colors. Right, sure. Just It's too little out there. This is the oldest model car that's still in production. Shuka still made that. We have 13 variants of it. So you can, you can well, that's an even older model, the Lehman Tutut. It's a wind-up toy. I just like that. You can look at series. You hear I have, I have various matchbox, and I can just go in and, and, and see all of those. And I, I started the website because when I was younger, I was in Europe, and I collected matchbox because that's what was available. And this list, actually, that was a website I used to use. It gave me links to other Matchbox sites. Mm-hmm. It has 32 links on it. Mm-hmm. You can see that eBay here. eBay is the only one that gets me to a site. It doesn't get me to that page anymore, but it gets me to the site. Mm-hmm. The other 31 are not dead. And that's, to me, one of the problems of the internet. Right. Compare that to this book. This book my brother wrote in 1987. It's about Zico. And I helped a little bit, so quite some time ago, almost 40 years ago. I helped a little bit. You can still get that. It's not a very good book, but it's out there. And I find that with the internet, you get more and more like this. You go to a web page and it's gone. Sure. And all the information is gone. Sometimes people lost interest. Sometimes they didn't pay the bills. Mm-hmm. These guys here, that's a um, huge game video database, QGATA. They had 55,000 video games. They worked 20 years on it. And then... Two of them, they got married and their wife said, look, you've got to make a choice. It's either us or the website. So the website, they went and closed it down and then we just took it over. And this one here is one of the finest guys out there. Gary had a website called Gary's Cars and it had, well, in fact, he had the biggest collection of blue box, the plastic stuff we talked earlier. It's all copies of Matchbox. He had all of that. He has a great collection of play art and Lego plastic and so on and so forth. And he joined our side and he started adding items. And then unbeknownst to us, he was very sick. He, got, he died and his, his girlfriend called me and said, look, he left me a letter. He said, well, if I die, you should call Christian Brock. And he should, he should huh. say, How about that? you should give him all my data because I don't want it to be gone. Mm-hmm. Because I've worked on it. He had 4,000 items on that website. So we've added those all in. And, and there's now a memorial website. So if you go to carriescars.co.uk, you get this, here, which is memorizing him. Mm-hmm. He was a great guy. That's nice. Uh, yeah, so that's why I created the site. I wanted to make sure that all that data stays out there because mm-hmm. we now create as much data as gets dis- gets deleted because you know, websites disappear all the time. Sure, sure. And it's it's something that the the hobbyists kind of have to keep alive. It's, it's fascinating. We had Mike Zarnock on, and obviously you know who Mike Zarnock is. He is the Hot Wheels archivist, the original Hot Wheels archivist. And he was creating this because he couldn't get the answers that he wanted from Mattel. And he ended up knowing more about the cars than Mattel did because these are toy companies. It's just like the big car manufacturers. They see these as products to get out the door and you're on to the next one. And they're not sitting there usually intricately documenting, okay, at this date, we switch to this color paint or we switch to this manufacturer or this manufacturing plant only painted these colors and this one only did these tampos and these wheels were switched out and, and he went and made it himself. And it's folks like him and Gary and you that, that make that stuff happen. It's the enthusiasm of the community that makes that happen. It's one of the reasons why this show exists. I, we wanted to get as much oral history of the people that are involved in this community as possible because people were starting to pass on. And now we've, we actually, we've got this really nice long interview with Chris Walker, who unfortunately passed away recently. And we've got that now preserved as a a time capsule of this amazing diecast customizer. And so I, I love this kind of stuff. I remember very early days of the internet, IMDB of course comes out and all of a sudden you could get all these facts on movies. And then Internet car movie database came out and you could get all the information on 
the cars that were in the movies. And then, of course, I get into this hobby more. And the first thing that comes up is Hobby DB. And because I'm interested in collecting some of the more oddball stuff too, like Ertl and Yatming. And, and so, of course, the lists that you have that, again, you're pulling from all these other sources are, are it because you can't go on Yatming's site and look up what they were making in the 70s and 80s. They don't have that information. Whoever owns it now is not the same people that owned it then, and they weren't keeping records. I mean, I imagine Blue Box was not sitting there carefully documenting their plastic copies of Matchbox cards. So it, it's something that the community itself has to keep alive. So I, I'm curious, you, you've talked about why you created the site, but what were you collecting before? I, obviously, it sounds like Siku was something that you were collecting, but were there other things that you were collecting before you decided to take on this project? Just wanted to say, yeah, I was going to show it because Chris Walker was a great guy. He did this custom for us here. Oh, wow. Um, Look at that. And, and, you know, and Chris and I talked a lot about documenting his work. And he said, I'll get to it later. And then it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. We got some of it, but not enough. And, and it's even more important to document those kinds of things because, you know, he often made 10 or sometimes five items. And once they're out there, and, and, and this one doesn't actually have his name on it. So if nobody knows that, then that's just unknown. In fact, uh, you mentioned manufacturers. Right? I mean, we, we have the official archive for mini gems. And when they gave us the information, we had 13,000 models. They lost all the photos to all the Ferraris. They didn't have them. Mm. We, have, we have, I would say, 70% back now because people have them and they add them to mm -hmm. the site. But yeah, so what do I collect? When I started, well, when I was six years old, my brother did a deal with me. He said, look, you get the... You get the toy soldiers and I get the, and they get the cars. And I was six. I said, okay. <laughs> so I had toy soldiers for a while and I almost wrote a book on them. A company called Timpo Toys. They made, they made some diecast as well. Mm -hmm. Timpo Toys, Toy Importers Toys is a German, mm -hmm. it was a German Jew that left Germany, World War II, went to the UK, started doing important business, did all kinds of toys initially, dolls and, and diecast. And we have some of those. And then he did uh, toy soldiers. So I, I had, I had 20,000 of those and I always wrote a book on them wow. and different to Mike Zarnock, I didn't pull through or my brother. Writing a book is hard work and I have a lot of respect because when you go to print, that's it. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, in the past, you could hope that you make a second edition. That Zika book my brother did, uh, that was re that came out six times. But these days, with the internet, you don't get another run. So once a book is printed, that's it. If you make a mistake, it will always be there. Mm -hmm. And it would always be. So the nice thing about the our site is I can add information, somebody else can correct it. It's yeah. never complete, but we don't say it will be. It's not sure. like a book. You don't have a print date. Mm -hmm. So I had the toy soldiers. He had the cars. He has 50,000 of them. He's written about 25 books on model cars. Mm. He has a very, very nice collection. And I collect, I had my toy soldiers, I sold them, and then I started buying them back. I became a dealer. Now I, I have I have a lot of space toys from the 30s to the 50s. I like those. You can see those. Those are children puzzles behind me. Oh, cool. I just love the colors. I like Buck Rogers. I like I like space cars. There's a lot of plastic and, and die cast from the early early time that is just has just these amazing forms. I mean, the 1930s had amazing forms anyway, and then with space, everything just got bigger and bubbles on it and so on and so forth. So I like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I have my uh, grandfather's giant book of Buck Rogers comics. It's that thick and it's, it's huge. And it got passed down to me. I, I, I love that, that early atomic era uh, type mm -hmm. diesel punk, almost kind of stuff. That's, that's super cool. And uh, yeah, it, you know, it's that kind of passion that you have to have to do something like this. And, and, and it's, it's, so important that it has digital feels fragile in a lot of ways but like you said it's adaptable you can change this like we we had charlie mack on the matchbox encyclopedia writer and he hasn't released a new version in 20 years the fourth edition is the last version he's not interested in writing another he doesn't have the time and so we've got well it's also it's not going to sell anything I mean, we, we did the, it was Jim Galachewski, who was a lovely guy. So Tom Tombush did the two first Hot Wheel guides. And then, and the last one he did was Jim Galachewski. Where is he? Jim, Jim, Jim. And then Jim couldn't, couldn't pay for it. So, so we 
gave him a law and they said, well, we'll do it together because this is fun. This is the this is the third Tomad guide to Hot Wheels. Jim now unfortunately died. He was a great guy too. He was an advisory council. And this goes to 2017. I don't think there'll be a forced version. Mm. Now, A, it's less needed, but you don't need these guides anymore because you can get it online. You can get it on your phone any point of time. And and B, this barely made money for him. He worked a lot on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you just look at this, you know, how much work that sure. is. That, I mean, I don't think he made $2 an hour on his work on that one. Right. So it's a lot of work. It's a work of love. So yeah, I think I think the time of price guides is gone. You know, we'll, we'll see more is is coffee table books, really nice photography. With the internet, can't do that well. I think I think books go that direction, and the internet will be your your guides. It will just give you everything that you need to know in terms of information. Back with more diecast breakdown after this word from our sponsors. Legendary Hollywood concept artist and designer Fireball Tim Lawrence has created three exclusive pieces of automotive art based on the three hosts of Diecast Breakdown. Get these and other brilliant designs printed on mugs and more at FireballTimGarage.art today. Here's this week's small channel shout out. Automotive history through Diecast. If you have a favorite Diecast channel with less than 700 subscribers and you'd like to see them highlighted on a future episode, email us at diecastbreakdown at gmail.com. And now back to Diecast Breakdown. Christian, thank, thank you first and foremost on behalf of the community. I, I consider you almost a curator of, of some of the, the, the hobby's oldest sacred text, if you will. Tell us... As somebody who has cruised the site for hours and which people can do because of the 10 years of work that you put into the site, I want to also make sure that people are aware of the app because I am really excited about the HobbyDB app and what it can do for a collector mm -hmm. in terms of organizing a collection, knowing what you have, maybe even knowing what the value of it is. Or for those collectors that are out there looking, I want you to explain how not only can they see what their vehicle, their piece may be worth, but if they need something, they can go find it. And you've got links to maybe a seller that can add that last piece to their collection that they need. Talk a little bit about the app and where it's going in the future. Absolutely. So here's the app. It has 400,000 downloads. It's quite straightforward. You, you type in what are you looking for? And key is, for example, for an M2, every M2 has these four digits on the package. Put that in that wording up the car. Hot Wheels, all modern Hot Wheels and all modern Matchbox have the Mattel number, which is a five digit alphanumeric number. You tap that in, comes up. I mean, you can also scan the barcode. But uh, all blue lines have the same, I mean, all main lines have the same barcode. So that doesn't always work that well. It's, it's, it's there. It gets you those items. As I said, you can barcode, you can put the reference number in. Important, you can use minuses. So for example, if you look for Hot Wheels Ford Mustang, you can see the results and, and, and zoom in further. Say the word treasure or minus main line or so forth just brings down the results. And then when you find your item, you can add it to your collection or see what it's worth. And then we're working on a number of uh, different initiatives. One that I think is going to be fun is image recognition. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you take that, it's a dairy delivery. There's 120 dairy deliveries in our database. And if you have the loose model, it's kind of hard. I mean, this one says got milk, so you can tap that in, I guess. But it, what we want to do is you photograph that mm -hmm. on the site. It has 2.4% TL and 3.1% magenta. We, and we know it's a, it's a car. It will just look through the database and show you items with 3.1% magenta and 2.4% teal that have this shape, which would be this model. That's amazing. Uh, so that's nice for, I mean, if you take the Chinese stuff, if you collect those, they don't have anything under them. Mm -hmm. They don't say right. anything. I mean, if you, if you go back to the 1950s, so, so a lot of these cars, they have a number two, mm -hmm. and that's it, nothing else. And, and it's kind of hard to recognize what it is. It could be a Buick. It could be not. So, so that will really help. And, and how much would someone expect to pay for such a powerful app? Surely $100, $200, $500. Now, I mean, the site is free. That's, uh, that's always been the idea. And we wanted – the information has been added by volunteers, and, and it is there for the community. So the, the, the app is free. We, we're hoping that people – 
we'll spend some time on it. We have some advertising. I apologize for that. And, and I'm hoping they're buying something. There's about 100,000 items in the marketplace now. So you can treat yourself there for something nice and we'll make a little income there. Our fee is 5%. It's better than eBay. And I, I should say, because you mentioned 10 years, I worked on this for 25 years now. Uh, I used to run 15 collector forums. Uh, and every collector forum I worked with, some of them I started, some I acquired. Every single one I worked with wanted to build a database. A database of everything that a particular audience cares about is the holy grail. Right. And forums are not very good for it. Forums suck. Oh, yeah. Building databases, <laughs> but they're still good. So, so I said, like, so then I sold the forms, said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do the database. And uh, I used to be in the UK. Collecting is very much an American subject. In the US, 60% of the collectible markets were white. Mm-hmm. Most of the collectors are here. So I, I felt I had to be here. That's why I moved to the US. And that's why I started HobbyDB. You're kind of all over the place. Though. I mean, this is your full time gig, right? Yeah, it's a life calling. Yeah, I, I, tra- I, I mean, I, tra- I, I traveled to collector mm-hmm. events, right? I mean, I, I was at the Nuremberg Toy Fair, which was great. I was at the New York Toy Fair, Designer Con, licensing a show. It tends to be, you know, what we really try to do is we have two challenges. One is going forward in time, and one is going backwards in time. Forward is all the new products that are coming out. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to work with brands and saying, hey, you should become an official archive. You should add everything that you do to mm-hmm. the site. And let's see, where do I, did I not? Yeah, I mean, th- this is an official archive we announced yesterday. You know, it's Microcar Models Australia. If you haven't seen them, not surprised. They would do very small production runs of some really, really unusual mm-hmm. models. You can see some here. And so they're gonna, now going to add everything into the site here. And we've just done, we've just done N2 machines. Took a while. It's about mm-hmm. 10,000 models. And then what we do where fun comes in is we'll also we'll produce some exclusive models. So in the past, we've done this one here. This, this was a M2 special. And we have something coming out in June that I'm very excited about. All right. Well, that little tease for everybody. Yeah. Christian, that, that sounds like a lot of work for one person. And you mentioned earlier that you have a, a squad of volunteers for the collector's that want to better the hobby for everybody, talk to, talk to us about how they can help hobby DB and in fact, you know, help the rest of us. Okay. I mean, as you can see on our homepage, here's a little bit of a frivolous claim over a hundred billion collectibles <laughs> eventually. So there is so much stuff out there. And, and what we, what I think we need is a hundred thousand volunteers. That's kind of my number. And we have a staff. There's about 15 of us on staff. I'll tell my team. I mean, they're all collectors. Isaac, for example, started the uh, Hot Wheels Wikia or Hot Wheels fandom. Timo is a big collector of uh, micro machines. So everybody in the team collects something, but I always tell them we are the, we're the janitors. We have to make sure that the database works and the features are there and it's safe and secure and that kind of good stuff. And then the volunteers, they do the heavy. There's two and a half thousand of them, well, 2,435, I think. And they're organized in, in groups. So there are, I think, about 40 or so Hot Wheel related volunteers. And there's some coordinators, and they coordinate the rest of that, of that group. And we have three people that do Porsche posters. We have every single Porsche poster. There's three volunteers that do that. We've worked that out over time. So if somebody wants to join, and we'd love to have you, just reach out to us. There's a contact button on the on the on the help page, and say you want to you want to join, and we'll set you up as what we call a rookie. And a rookie can add information to the database, but it needs to be checked by somebody first before it can be seen by the public. That's sure. relatively new. Mm-hmm. And then so we we buddy them up with somebody else who knows the system better. They work together until the new person is is feels. Like they, they know how this works, and then they can add items and information to it. And then as, they, as, they, as we get to know them and they get to know the system, they can, they can grow into a new role every now and then. And the idea is, in the beginning, you can add, but, but everybody, somebody else has to check it. And before you get to delete information, that's the top of the pyramid, because it's obviously something we're very scared mm-hmm. about. You got you to gotta really know how it works. Sure. And you can also be the curator of Brent. I mean, I think that's that's a fun part where take Carl Schnell. He's the curator of Techno, 
you know, Danish company, um, well, Danish company that later became a Dutch company. He does a Danish part. So he handles that section and he gets to see any new entry for techno. He gets a notification. He can check it. He can verify it. So he owns that part of our world, if you like. Oh, that's that's very interesting because I was curious because a lot of people think of something crowdsourced like this, like Wikipedia, where just about anybody can go in and change something. And in fact, one of the people that I, I follow on social media is complaining because as a practical joke, people keep going into his site and changing his bio. And so so this is not like that. You can't just come in off the street and say, oh, well, the there was a pink and purple version of the Torino stalker that was released in 1997 that nobody knows about but me. <laughs> that So there there is a, a, a distinct process in place. And I, I think it's really interesting that you have these these curators that specialize in that as well. So there's actually like a, a hierarchy, almost like an, an org chart. People report to the expert in that field, which I'm sure is a, a lot of uh, weight off your shoulders, because that means you don't have to verify every single entry that comes through. No, I mean, de- definitely. I mean, yeah, every so just to show you here. So you, you start off as a rookie, it's called the squad. And then you become a contributor, a creator, a curator, a champion. You can see where everything we see, a coordinator. Wow. And this, these are the different things you can do. So when you're a price rookie, you can add eBay prices and you can rate. Yeah. And if you then become a contributor, then you can do a few more things. And as you can see here, if you coordinator, you can do almost everything. And and that's the idea. Plus, we have a revision history, so we can see who made which change, ah, and we can revert it. Right. We have flags. Everything can be flagged. We get about 60 flags a day from somebody saying, this is not quite right, or this should be changed, or you're missing this, or something like that. And it's great. When we started, everybody was allowed to do everything on the site, because that would be my ideal scenario. But it turns out there are scammers, and there are spammers, mm. and there, there are people <laughs> And there are people that do not like rules. I mean, I'll give you an idea. We build rules for almost everything. So, for example, what's the name of a product? Mm. You think that might be easy, but it's not. So we have these four rules here of how you build the name. First is what's on the package, even if that's wrong. So this one is a quite famous Hasbro Luke Skywalkware. Mm. has a double mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. mistake in here. So that's the name of that. They then very shortly corrected that. So this is the rare variation. They very shortly corrected, but that's what we're going to call this. We have an alternative name, which is the correct spelling. And then if it's a foreign language name and whatever doesn't have a name at all. So you, you need to have these rules. Uh, we just created a rule for 3D printed uh, model cars. How do we mm, document those? Yeah. What do we call customs? I mean, you mentioned Charlie Mack. I, mean, I don't know if he came up with that. Code one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we had to define production statuses. Uh, that's all in here. So yeah, help, I, I, I help remember other... him saying things like, oh, that's a code three truck or something like that. But that used to be a very common term. Well, they were caught fours and fives and six. And and I mean, like the pin peoples call um, certain things fantasy pins. They're really unlicensed pins. Uh, so they're bootleg. Everybody has different terms. And we just needed to build... Because there's so many people who are working on this project, you need some rules. So when we started, we had scammers, we had spammers, and where people didn't want to follow rules. And we just had to say, okay, that's not going to work. We have a forum, and all the volunteers are in there, and we discuss new rules. And rules can also be changed if needed. But in principle, once we come up with a rule, that's what we would like to see because that makes the experience more consistent. Sure. Yeah. And and when you're running something this important, you've got to have those kind of infrastructures in place. And that's the that whole garbage in, garbage out thing when you are building a database, like you you've got to have true consistency because like you said, you click on a link and it tells it, okay, we'll pull up all of the Torino stalkers. Okay, well, if somebody wrote just Ford Grand Torino, it's not going to show up. Or you have to find a way to label it so that it shows up with the other Ford Gran Torino models if someone's searching for Ford Gran Torinos, even though it's not technically called a Ford Gran Torino. You you would have that listed as something that would be considered an alternate version of like that list where you had all the gremlins, you'd have all of the different 
Torino's and that one would be called something different. So that, that makes a lot of sense. That's really, really fascinating. Now, yeah. there's something on the site that I noticed and I, I hadn't noticed this before. And it says, join the revolution, invest for as little as $100. So tell me about yeah. that, because that looks really interesting. Thanks for asking. So as I said, I wanted 100,000 volunteers. And in the early days, when I talked to somebody about saying, hey, why don't you join us and why don't you help? And we, we have a guy, Zuck. You added 75,000 items to the database. Yeah, amazing. Mm. Um, and in the beginning, sometimes I would talk to people and say, well, I, I, I don't, this is not my side, it's your side. I'm like, well, and that was true at the time. And when crowdfunding came in, there was, there was something called the Jobs Act, which allowed normal people to buy stakes in companies, in private companies that wasn't allowed beforehand. Mm. And, and platforms came along that the SEC approved where you can invest a hundred dollars. That's the minimum. We can invest as little as a hundred dollars. I said, that's great. Cause what I want is a hundred thousand volunteers that own the site that will make us a public company by the back door. Cause then if you, if you don't collect anymore, you can sell your shares and somebody who comes new in the hobby can buy them. I think that would be fantastic. So we've, we've done this now five times. We've gone to the, we've gone to our members saying, look, if you, if you want to buy some of the sites, you can do it. This is your chance. You can invest a hundred dollars. You can invest a thousand dollars. You can invest 10,000, whatever you want. And, and then you own some shares. Mm. And then if, if we do well, you do well. And now, now I, I have all these volunteers that, that I have to call my boss because they are, they own, <laughs> they own the company. Wow. Somebody that pays you and volunteers their time. Where have I heard that model before? Thank you, executive <laughs> producer David Johns. Well, they don't pay me. They're buying, they're, they're buying shares. I, I joke. They're, they're becoming, they're becoming. Uh, I joke because I was the, original starter of this channel and now the two other gentlemen david and mark are two of our highest sponsors on the show so they're they're giving me hours of their week every week and paying me for the privilege of me taking advantage of their free labor but but like you said it's a labor of love we do this because we feel like we're the people best suited to do this like we we saw some opportunity that people weren't meeting with people and telling their stories. And you could, you know who Mike Zarnock is and who Larry Wood is from a bio or, or a video where they're talking about their car experience or whatever. And there, there's not really a chance for people to just kind of sit down and be like, hey, here's who I am. Here's what I enjoy doing when I'm not collecting. Here's the kind of person I am. And hey, maybe I'll give you a tour of my garage or maybe I'll, I'll talk to you about this other thing and get that personality that we miss so often like it's so important and, and i want to get to this because hobby db is not just about cars and collectibles it's about people too you've got lots of designers and creators on there and so so tell me about choosing who goes into this database as personalities and and how you document that sort of thing the idea is that there are what we call subject mm -hmm. pages. So he has, he has James Bond. He has the 24 hours of Le Mans. And with everything else as well, you can always drill down. So you can click, for example, on related subjects to the 24 hours of Le Mans. And that gives you every race and every driver and you know, anything, any team that, that raced. And you can click on, on a particular year and then see, see collectibles related to that year, like these models or posters or anything. Here's Sterling Moss. And what you can do is you can say, okay, show me the cars that Sterling Moss drove. It's one of my favorite drivers. And here they are, right? And then, and then if you like the Tipo, you can click on that. And then that shows you models related to it, besides the story of the Maserati Tipo. So you can see those models and you can go down further and you can see who he drove is like Dan Gurney and see what do we have on him. Mm -hmm. So you, subjects are great. Uh, Anything that's real, that is relevant to an item can be added. So we have, I don't know if you go to Hot Wheels and click subjects and then click Hot Wheels related subjects and then say, for example, you want to see designers, then there they are, kindly sorted by most liked. So there's Larry Wood, mm -hmm. there's Brendan. Mm -hmm. And you can click on, on one of those guys and then see everything that's related mm -hmm. to them. So here's models that Brendan designed. And here's some third party links and here are the models. That's just staggering, Christian. Can you can you give maybe just a selfish question really quickly? Do you have any idea 
for the diecast collecting community that's watching this episode what what share diecast and, and automobile holds on the hobby db yeah so we i think we have what 260,000 pages on model cars slot cars and model mm-hmm. kits so that's about that's about a third yeah, and and I, I think that's that's probably and then we have automobile mm-hmm. and, and and that doesn't count. I mean, we have a thousand Matchbox magazines, the various clubs made, like Charlie's Club, for example. We got we got we got thousands of model car mm-hmm. brochures. In the past, every model car company made pins. We got those. We got the we got Hot Wheels salesman's awards mm-hmm. that Hot Wheels gave to their salesmen in the way back. We've got everything that the test is somebody has to be willing to spend the time to document it. Mm-hmm, sure. If, if, if you care enough about something, we're not in the way. You can add it. Yeah. In that regard, we're different to Wikipedia. We don't, we don't judge things to be important or not important. Notable, they call it. You want to add something? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Do it. And we just have to make sure that the search is good enough so that everybody can find what they want to find. In fact, I, I had want to talk a little about that. So one of the things that that I think people don't quite understand is how powerful the search is. So uh, if you if you for example, let's say you look for M two, that's about ten thousand results. You can now you can now add say Ford. Now you so now I'm having M two and Ford, and then if I want to do Bronco, I can add that. So I can I can zoom down a tree. I can also delete one mm-hmm. of these things, and then I can. This is an experimental feature. I can group them in. And what this does now, it just shows me that they made eight variants of the 2021. Then they made two variants of these different two sets here. And they made three variants of this double set and 44 variants of the, of the earlier Bronco. Right. And if I want to see that earlier Bronco, I click on the 44 variants and then it will show me those. And then I can, I can again, I can do some more search and, and zoom in. So if I, I think there's some Coca-Cola ones, right? What is this one here? Walmart. So if I want to say, okay, I remember it is Walmart related, then you just type in Walmart, add it. You can see there's a new search and an ad mm-hmm. search. So if I add this, it will uh, now just show me Walmart items. And of course, I lost my search now. But yeah, yeah so so the, the grouping is kind of interesting. You can say, show me M2 and then... And then... Drill down. Sorry. Yeah, I should have really done it. Don't touch the dial. Diecast Breakdown will be right back after these messages. Diecast Breakdown is produced in partnership with Twice Diecast and Driven Dreams Org on YouTube. Check out their channels in the video description and subscribe for more epic Diecast content. Diecast Breakdown would like to thank Diecast Heroes Magazine for supporting this program. Diecast Heroes Magazine is the premier digital and print resource just for Diecast customizers. Visit DiecastHeroes.com and see what the best customizers in the world are up to. Hey, this is Larry Wood. Hey, this is Derek from Honest Diecast. Hey, this is Chad Reed from Round 2. And this is Mike from Gas Labs. The SRT Joe Vita Show. This is Champion DJ K. Hey, this is Mad Vision here. This is Diecast Dude. And you're watching Diecast Breakdown. And now, the thrilling conclusion of this week's episode of Diecast Breakdown. And what what uh, appeals to me about that, Chuck, and see if you agree, when I like a, a specific casting... Sometimes I just don't know, and maybe it's not Hot Wheels, so you can't go to their site to find this, but sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and Christian's got it all here for you. You can, well, sure. how many rabbit holes can we go down, <laughs> Christian? Because I yeah. I can find every version or even stuff that's similar to exactly what I'm looking for. This is just an amazing collection of information that you, you've put together. Because... We, we build the search very powerful between, so you've got in the li- on the left your filters. Um, you can say new and add. There's different ways of sorting, and you can also filter by type. And the combination of that makes it really powerful. So if you plus the ability to minus and not see something. Mm-hmm. So you just got to use those because there's so much stuff. You just need yeah. to do that. You need to use all those tools. And then, for example, if you, you can type in Yatming, 
Toyota and then just see what they've made and then and then zoom mm-hmm. in or, or you can start with Toyota minus mm-hmm. all. If you just want 164 scale Toyotas but not Hot Wheels, you can do that too. You just say minus Hot Wheels. Yeah, I think people struggle a little bit with that sometimes. So there's powerful mm-hmm. tools. They require a little bit of, of playing around sure. with. You can also look at the help. Most people mm-hmm. don't like to do that. The help is up here <laughs> on the top right. There's tutorials on, on how to really use the site to zoom in deep if you wanted that. Yeah, that's really cool. I noticed that there's there's a very kind of strong similarity when you're looking at the different photos of the cars. So when somebody wants to contribute a car, do you have like set instructions for how to properly take the photo of the car that they want to add? Or is it just kind of coincidence because manufacturers tend to take the same photo of the same angle of their vehicles? No, I mean, for everything. So, I mean, take postcards. We want two photos mm-hmm. front and back. For for a model car, we, we have different types of photos. So on the search, we really like that. Three-quarter view. Thank you. And then as what we call the main photo, which which is when you click in, that's, that should be the item in this packaging. So there are, there are some rules. That being said, I mean, if there's only one photo, we'll sure. take that. Like everything else on this party can be approved over time. The gallery has no limits. So anybody can add any photos they want. And we just identify which are the key photos. And that's documenting the help. And then, I mean, for example, this gentleman here, you can see he loves his background. Every single, I mean, yeah. this guy has, has four, 5,400 models now in his data, in his, in his showcase. We call this a showcase. Now you can, you can build your own showcase. It's quite fun. You can build different groups. So, I mean, this guy sorts his car by colors, mm-hmm. as you can see, and by decades. And then when he has a, that would be the love button mm-hmm. page. There you go, Chuck. You can build your own little museum if you like, and you can change the rooms every day, which one is oh, your that's cool. main list and so on and so forth. This guy collects Porsche postcards. So here's somebody else who collects Porsche posters. You, you can define how this whole thing looks like. It builds the value of your collection over time. And you can have your top 10. You can share that with people and so on and so forth. Oh, that's fascinating. I did, I did not know you could do that on the site. That's really cool. You could do this to protect your investment, Christian. You could document your entire collection if you ever had a terrible loss. Yeah, We offer an insurance service, and we, we've worked with insurance companies in the past. Our, our members now own 52 million items worth about $10 billion. So, yes, there is some value out there. And you can – I mean, we, we've had a gentleman who thinks that he wants his daughter to have the collection, and he documents it all because when he passes on to her, she knows what it is, and she can sell it. So yes, you can do that, or you can just enjoy enjoy it. Right? I mean, you can you can show it to people on the phone. You can you can you can build your lists here. You can do all kinds of stuff. The idea was really this showcase. I mean, that's his real car. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. The showcase is allowing you to show you the collection you want. You can also have items for private. So you, you don't have to share them. You don't. You don't have to share the estimated value if you don't want to. It's all. It's all configurable. Oh, that is super cool. Well, I know some of our viewers are definitely going to want to do something like that with their collection. Or it's funny you mentioned that because David works in insurance, and we're thinking about doing an episode on insuring your collection in the future. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll. I'll be in touch, Christian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, one one thing you can do. Let me just show you a few. I mean, for example, you can go to your collection as a whole and then type in, I heard Yap Ming. Let's see, does he have Yap Mings? Yeah, I can, I can take this and uh, I, have I, can, I can send somebody that link and then they see exactly what I have. Mm-hmm. Or you can put it in a, in a discussion, right? It's saying, which Yap Mings do you have? Well, yeah, those, those are the ones I own. Wow. And this is the front-facing part of your collection. There's also... You can build a gallery. He doesn't have anything here. You can have your items for sale. It uh, goes there. You can have a wish list. You can share all of those parts. And then separately to that, you've got your collection management, which other people don't see. That's just for you. So the showcase is for the world. The collection management, oh, is it mine here? this is where you can say, where do I have stuff? Do I want to repair something? What do I want to insure? And so on and so forth. So there's two aspects here. There's the internal this is my collection. I can see everything I have and I can put it in different buckets and so on and so forth. And then there's the external. That's what I want the world to see. Yeah. What I liked, I saw earlier, Christian, was I went to a link where someone was selling a piece and the, the guy had a description that said, Hey, I'm open to trade. 
please go visit my wish list and see if you have any of these and maybe we could work out a swap. I mean, it, it, yeah. the, the possibilities of this are really endless. And if, in, if collectors are want to take their collection past going to Walmart and picking out some cars on a weekday and, and be serious about it and know what they have and, and really grow it. I can't think of a better, better way to catalog it than this. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. There wasn't a question there. I was, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just talking out loud. No, that, I, I, I agree. Like yeah. this is a, a, a fascinating thing. Cause again, I, I had visited hobby DB. Usually I go to get information or, uh, it's been really handy when we had interviews with guests yep. coming up because I can go and go, okay, well, we're interviewing Brendan Batusky. I need a quick bio on Brendan. And I could, and, and I actually used Hobby DB to prep for that interview. I used it with him and with Larry. It's an incredibly useful tool as a reference guide, but I didn't even really think about it as an interactive tool. So I really hope mm-hmm. that the people that are watching and listening are educated about what they can do with this thing, that it's so much more than just something where you can look up a couple of Hot Wheels. You can l- look up the whole history of it, see who designed it, see what else they worked on, see what Who's got one for sale? these are worth and what other people have for sale. You can actually buy through there. And I think that's a really fascinating thing. I think that eBay for so long has had this stranglehold on collectible sales and that with stuff like this, I love it because this, this improves the experience for everyone. We get a better way to buy things. We get a more reasonable exchange rate, uh, a percentage for selling stuff. It, it connects and educates as much as it is just something that as opposed to eBay would just be, you can put up whatever you want and hopefully whatever that person is saying about their thing is honest. And here you can actually go and see, okay, well, this person is listing it for this price. Well, the estimated value on something like this would be about here. So maybe that's a good deal. Maybe it isn't. So you can see who, what he owns. We will eventually also show who he knows. So you can find out if you know somebody who he knows. You, you just get a better understanding. If somebody's a member since 2018, mm-hmm. you know, has helped build the database, is a member of a particular club, you, you get to see all that information. Mm-hmm. So, so it makes it much, much easier to transact because you just know, know so much more. Mm. Do you have, Christian, do you have any kind of seller uh, feedback available on there? All right. Yeah. I mean, as, as, as it shows, it shows everywhere. It shows in your showcase. Mm-hmm. So if you go, let's go to the marketplace. When you talk to Luis Tanara, he had a he had a brand of the called the Sled Star. You should ask him about that. Oh yeah, I own one. Uh, oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We know about it. Yes. Oh okay, okay, okay. So you can see here, here. So this seller here, Hot Wheels Mojo. One second. So if you hover over that, you say as a seller, he has five. He's five or five. He has two hundred ninety-seven rating ratings in total. Mm-hmm. He had made fourteen sales with us. Some of these were done earlier with the Toy Peddler. So this person here. 30,868 ratings in total. Mm. So there's Jay House. And you can, you can, you can see, you can click on their more items for sale. You can click on their showcase. So you can just check that guy out, right? Yeah. I mean, that's him. So mm-hmm. here's a little bit of text about him. Member since May 2016. In his own collection, he has 4,800 items. He has his top 10. You get to see much more about this guy is. Is a creator. He's a shareholder. He's added more than 100 items. He added 492 items to the database. He's a real person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is that is incredible. And there's the collection thing. All right. Yeah. Well, before we wrap things up, is there is there anything that you wish we'd asked you, or anything that you would like to highlight that we haven't talked about yet? Just to experience the site. It's it is a very rich experience. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to use than I would like mm-hmm. to. We're working on that. But that's basically because it does so many different things. And and some are new, like because I've, I mentioned the dairy delivery. We have 120 variants of that. We have more than 100 customs. Uh, we have prototypes. We have errors. Uh, we've got all the stuff that other people don't. Uh, we have sub-variants. Mm-hmm. This, this model comes on different cards. In Europe, it had a different name. It was called Moo Mobile for some reason. <laughs> so it has all that extra information that means you may have to 
experiment a little bit longer than with another mm-hmm. website, but I think it's worth the experience. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Don't be overwhelmed. Yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't try and take it all in one yeah. night. That's a long <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> Click slowly and leisurely and en- enjoy the journey. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just amazing how this all has come together and the fact that we're doing, we're getting these tools now and you're using these advanced searches that can search actual images. And I'm sure as AI advances, that's going to make it easier to document things and recognize stuff immediately and make building these databases better and improve the the user experience. But I, I mean, this to me is every bit as good. It's better than going to Wikipedia. The user experience is better. It's it, it makes sense logically to walk through. And I think, again, I, I'm kicking myself for not diving further into this sooner because again i think of hobby db as oh well that's the thing that comes up when i google this thing and i i go in and i get my information and oh that's great and i i leave and i i haven't really explored the site and i'm definitely going to be doing that more in the future and i hope our, our viewers and listeners do the same so again folks hobbydb.com of course we'll be linking to that christian is there any other links or socials that you would like people to check out or follow well, I mean, yeah, please, please join us, hobbytv.com. And if you do, if you do, if you want me to work for you, if you want to own part of it, we'd love to have you also as a volunteer. Mm-hmm. That's wefunder.com forward slash hobbydb. So that's we.com forward slash hobbydb. And get the app. Yes, get the app. Get the app. Hey, let Diecast Breakdown be the first to congratulate you on half a million downloads. Yeah, that's incredible. In advance. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's happening for sure. Well, all righty. Well, Christian, again, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Thank you for, for volunteering. That is, we were like, oh, maybe one day we'll get big enough that we could get people like Hobby DB and stuff on here. And I was like, oh, oh, I guess we can, we can do that now. And here, here, here we are. Oh, I mean, time. And, and if you want to, we can talk next time. Or I don't know how, right? Yes. Oh, we'd love to talk about that. Uh, so, Okay. Okay. I'm sharing it. I mean, you can talk to me or Duran, mm-hmm. who now runs it, but that's actually mm-hmm. Mike Zanog is in there. So we can talk about that too. And, and who collects Yat Ming? That was you, right, Chuck? Yes. So I, I met the new owner of Yat Ming, uh, at the toy fair 10 years ago. The old owner and his daughter were there and we talked a little bit and the daughter said, people want these. I'm like, yeah, Yat Ming. This is 10 years ago. I said, play out Yat Ming, they're coming in, they're coming in and they're going to, they're just going to go up in value. She said, Oh no. So why? She said, when we closed the factory, I had a skip outside. Oh no. And she said, I filled it up. I filled it up. She said, I threw everything away. We had to give up the space. Mm-hmm. I threw everything away. And uh, I did meet a British lawyer. He's a die cast. He has an amazing collection. He used to be mm-hmm. part owner of Spark uh, and Bizarre. And he would go to all the factories with his friend and they would just dig for things <laughs> mm-hmm. and they would find stuff. In fact, I live in Colorado up the road. The first Lego factory in the US mm-hmm. was here. It's up there. There's a joint venture with Samsonite. And if you go to that space and you dig, you will find Lego bricks. That's amazing. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's just the nature of it, it's business. It's progress. I, the, the, there's a company in Florida that is remaking DeLoreans out of all of the old stock that exists. And they, they've got a location in Texas as well, and they're rebuilding those. And they're trying to get all of the original stuff. And, and the the casting molds that they made the body panels out of DeLoreans are now reefs off the coast of Ireland. They just threw them in the ocean because they had no no use for them anymore. So the stuff like that, and, and I, I love that there are companies now like Round 2 that are going in and retooling stuff and renewing the old castings and preserving those things and that there is a market for those. And it's just... Absolutely. I mean, just on that note, mm-hmm. so these are Zico Iran. So we talked about Zico. Yes. The forms for the plastic... Zico made first plastic in their metal. Mm-hmm. The plastic forms were sold to Iran. And for a brief period, they made them there. So these are Iranian 
Seco models and have great colors. That's very, 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 very mm, rare. That's uh, crazy. So yes, those forms, I mean, it's like boobies. They were old Hot Wheels forms. Yeah. And no, not Booby, right. Mookie, Mookie. So the old Hot Wheels forms went there. When you look at play arts, some play arts, people in the past were good at bringing scales down. So some 124 model scales were made into play art models. Interesting. Um, and if you look at, we were going to have a conversation. I, I like, I like fakes and, and replicas and, and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if Tom T, it's a Norwegian company. Not particularly. Every single model. That, that's a Corgi. Mm-hmm. I think that's a Dinky. I'm not sure. No, that might be a Solido. That's a Dinky, I think. So are those like vacuum form plastic or? Hey, rubber. They're like rubber. Cast plastic? Rubber. Okay. Yeah. That's, rubber. that's a Corgi. <laughs> that's a Corgi. So everything that they made is just uh, just a copy of something. I think that's it's wild. Yeah. No, that reminds me of when we were talking to Charlie Mack, and he was talking about the matchboxes that were made in Bulgaria. That, that they they went and visited the factory, and it was just like a row of houses where like people were just making these in their house and painting them with whatever paint they had lying around and throwing whatever decals or whatever they wanted on the on the cars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean we 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 have dozens and dozens Christian Falkenstein adds them all. We have loads and loads of the Bulgarians and there's so many of them. It's the same with the Brazilians in Rimas from Brazil, mm-hmm. same kind of thing. They're so shortly made that it's it's actually a little problem because it's so hard to know if something is genuine or not. Uh-huh. Because obviously they are very easy to imitate because sure. they put a piece of, they have a piece of paper on the bottom that just says made in Brazil paper. Yeah. And, and then, mm-hmm. uh, and then they have different color doors to the body, but he obviously can, you can do that yourself if you need to. Sure. Because nobody knows what's out there. Yeah. It's a tough one. Yeah. No, and, well, and, and even beyond that, you've got like when manufacturers get bought up, like the corgis that, turned into Hot Wheels cars like the Buick Regal and yeah. there was a Mercedes wagon and a Ford Thunderbird that became there. There were quite a few of them that became Hot Wheels cars, even though they looked very different from Hot Wheels cars. I, and sometimes there's legal reasons. So for example, Matchbox has to so Mattel owns Dinky toys, right? But doesn't make any. So mm-hmm. every now and then they take something else and just, so they have some, they are some matchbox dinky toys that they make. They just say dinky toys, they're matchbox. When they say dinky in the package, for legal reasons, they feel like every five years they have to do that because you have to use the, you sure. have to use the brand, which you lose the patent on it. Mm. Uh, so yes, there's all this kind of weird stuff out there. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a fascinating world to dive down and I'm glad that you're there to help us get through it. But again, Thank you so much, Christian. We could talk about all this all night. I know you have got a lot of important stuff to do with this site, so we're going to let you get back to it. But I mean, last question, last question is, why don't you guys join the squad? Well, I, I, I'm seriously thinking about it now because I am fascinated by this, and I, I would like to think that I have something to contribute to it. But everybody's got such good information. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly going to put some customs on there because I've built a bunch of customs. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, can, you definitely add those. I, and remember, I mean, that's the key thing. You're not writing a book. People look, if you add a model that we don't have, that's great. If the photo is not great, it's okay. Somebody can prove it. If mm. you don't know when it was made, don't worry. Somebody can else, else add it to it. So you, as long as what you report is correct, that it's not complete, it's okay. It's better to have... Any photo than no photo, it's better to have the entry incomplete than complete. So you can mm-hmm. always add, and then and then you can follow the item and other as others add more information to it. You learn as well. That's a very good point. Yeah. So it shouldn't yep. stop you from. Ad- I've always tell people, you. It's different to writing a book. You don't need to be the world leading expert. You don't need to be Charlie Mack. You can mm-hmm. just be, you know, Chuck Ellis and and add information and value to the site. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I am certainly going to do that. I can I can do that at the very least. Next, I'll get you set up as a rookie. Okay, sure. We and then and then you can do an episode about your experience. Yeah, that would be that would be that'd be a great video because we do other videos too. We do reviews and stuff. We could do a, a whole segment on just what it's like to be a contributor. So I think that would be very fun. So yeah, I'll I'll reach out to you after the show. Well, again, thank you, Christian, for being on. Again, please, people, check out all the links down below. And of course, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Please share the show. That is the best way to 
help get this show growing and continue to keep this thing going so we can continue to have amazing guests like Christian. Again, thank you for making it to the end of another episode of Diecast Breakdown. Thanks to our patrons and thank you. It's It's been a wonderful journey so far and we can't wait to see what's next. So as always, we want to thank you for coming along with us for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Thanks for listening to Diecast Breakdown. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and tell a friend to listen in. Find Diecast Breakdown on your favorite social media platforms or visit diecastmedianetwork.com to learn more about this and our other projects. Diecast Breakdown is a presentation of Flying Valiant and the Diecast Media Network.